Okay, back to it. Um, Piggy left. Apparently, I bored her with my discussion, so I figured there's no good reason that you need to see me anymore. Um, so, yeah, I figured you would want to see Piggy. Not so much me, so who cares? Um, okay, so just to continue, uh, I hope that you went in and made the, had the discussion questions. Um, I wanted to give you the link. This is a link to a preview of the book if you're interested about any more of these uh, types of criminals that that Irwin listed. Um, there's also uh, a really great website. Uh, it's called archive.org where you can rent books basically um, for free and just kind of go in and check things out. So feel free in your spare time this week to take a look at that. So uh, the another kind of work about prisons that I wanted to introduce you to well, as uh, this a, a type of another typology again um this one was written by graham sykes a famous uh, criminologist and he studied he did an uh what we call an ethnographic study so he went into a prison and observed prison life for a while and he found that there were different types of inmates who react differently to examples in or to the experiences in prison so he compared the first group they were gorillas and merchants gorillas are people who take by force they're not just bullies because they don't just focus on weak people they go after everybody so they take what they want they get it uh, they don't ask questions whereas merchants are those who kind of trade and negotiate and they're a little bit more skilled and generally nicer about it regarding sexual activity uh also, please keep in mind this was 1958, so I didn't choose to use this term. This was Sykes's term that is inappropriate now. It's probably still inappropriate then, but again, it's timely, but I didn't want to put the full word out there. Um, but in terms of sexual activity, he called people wolves, and those people were dominant or really masculine, masculine men um, who engage in homosexual activities in prison. So these are men who rape other men, um, and and do it by force. Um, this actually shouldn't say submissive. I'm sorry. So these two are other the to submissive types of men. Um, he called them. He differentiated between punks and the other group because punks were submissive men who only have at that time had sexual homosexual activities with other inmates as a result of their situation. That outside of there, they were solely heterosexual. Whereas he called the other group. Um, you know, the derogatory term, but men who were homosexual before they entered prison and continued homosexual behavior in prison. Um, in terms of how people experience their their world or their their prison time, he called ball busters those men who are really just like openly defiant, just were assholes to other people, were assholes to corrections officers because they were mad at the situation and mad at being incarcerated. Whereas he called real men people who were trying to be kind of still uh, I don't know, like virtuous or taking their punishment in stride without allowing the prison system or the officers to take away his dignity um, or allow them to or force him to give up his self-control. And then the last people um, he called toughs and hipsters. So again, toughs are a lot like gorillas in the sense that they kind of exploit and terrorize other people. Toughs kind of do it from a sociopathic kind of way, whereas gorillas do it to get something that they want. Um, and hipsters are people that just try to fit into groups that because they think they should in prison, but they don't necessarily belong to those groups. One of the things that I want you to do is, you know, with this slide here, the types of criminals that they saw in prison and then the types of inmates are to keep an eye out for these people in uh, Orange is the New Black. These are archetypes, again, like these stereotypical kind of typology ways that we can think about people. And you'll see them in Orange is the New Black and Oz because um, and Shawshank Redemption and uh, not necessarily White Bear, but um you know, these are stereotypes that we just want to portray on TV because it's common and these common misconceptions. If anything, I think you'll see more of these in Shawshank and Oz, but you'll definitely see some explanations of people's behavior through this. Um, so I just want to talk a little bit about the prison experience, right? And some just considerations. You could write hundreds of pages on each of these issues alone, but I just wanted to be clear about some of the things. One of the main concerns is keeping things secure for both inmates and officers. If you're interested in the history of prisons, uh, you may want to kind of 
uh, just Google things that happened like Attica, right, or things that happened at Alcatraz, um, and it's generally it generally led to an increased concern about security and the development of Admax and and Supermax prisons. Um, one common joke that we have in society is about prison rape jokes about don't drop the soap and uh you know i've heard people on on sitcoms say they can't go to prison because they're too pretty um and one of the things you know you may laugh about this um but i think we want to think about the consideration that we we, it, we make light of a common issue about the threat of rape in prison and in the same way that societally we made jokes about r kelly doing heinous things and molesting young girls and peeing on them, uh, we do the same thing with prison rape. And some people may argue that they deserve what they get in prison, blah, blah. If they didn't want to be raped, then they shouldn't have gone to prison. Um, but I think we need to seriously step back for a second and think about things in terms of cruel and unusual punishment and why we collectively as a society think of rape as an appropriate punishment or consequence of someone's actions. Um, there have been federal moves to address this issue, such as uh, PREA, which is short for the Prison Rape Elimination Act. We also need to think about things like meeting basic needs for prisoners. So this includes health care. This includes food, safety, protection, things like that. For women uh, in prison, it may also include things like uh, pads and tampons and uh, protecting them from the threat of rape or assault by, again, other inmates or even uh, corrections officers. We can also think about what programming and rehabilitation is offered because, again, one of the goals of um, prison and punishment is to fix people. So what should we offer people? Um, I, I've heard many times about educational programs or about vocational training in prison that that's unfair because out in the real world, non-criminals have to pay for this. So why should criminals or felons or inmates get these opportunities. So you kind of have to balance fairness and also things that will prevent recidivism. Um, we can also talk about consequences of misbehavior. So what do we do with someone when they misbehave in prison, particularly if they have a life sentence so we can't just extend their sentence? Uh, there's a lot of information out there about solitary confinement and the negative effects for it. Um, while I talked about on mass, like the prisoners living on mass and among large groups of people, there are significant notable negative effects of solitary confinement, including depression, severe anxiety, uh, sensory deprivation, and even psychosis. And one of the things you need to know is that many people go directly from solitary confinement and then are released into the real world. There's also a really great um, journalistic piece that I will link in the folder about a journalist who interviewed people in solitary confinement about 20 years ago and then later he went back to revisit it and see if things had changed and he saw many of the people that he had interviewed before that um, who had not had human contact since he had interviewed them 20 years before that. So if that's something you're interested in, I'll definitely provide the link for you. Um, there's also this notion of institutionalization, which you'll see um, in Shawshank Redemption, that some people... Um, have been imprisoned so long that they can't function outside of a prison again. And that's something that we need to be concerned about and how we think about it, uh, particularly as it relates to this preventing recidivism, making sure that people don't just keep returning to prison. Um, and then also how can we maintain ties to society? So things like keeping fathers in touch with their children, right? Or spouses in touch with each other. Um, so yeah. I could jump off on another whole tangent about that, but I won't. Um, and then lastly, there's also what we call invisible punishment. So even the, during, while people are incarcerated and then even after they've served their time, there are still unintended effects or consequences or perhaps very intended consequences. Um, first and foremost, that many in many states, people who are who have been convicted of a crime, who have been incarcerated, are not allowed to vote um, and they're not allowed to serve on juries. So we're really excluding them from... Uh, civic life and engagement and not bringing them back into society, even though they've already served their time. Also in many states and federally, um, those who have been charged and, and found guilty, charged with and found guilty of felony drug crimes are not eligible for public benefits or assistance or even housing. So many times people are released from prison. Um, they have no job. They have very limited opportunities for employment. 
um, and they have nowhere to live and they can't afford anything and they can't get any help from the government. Um, in certain cases of undocumented people, they may be deported for their crimes. Um, again, opportunity employment. So not many people want to hire someone who has just been released from prison or jail. Um, if the felon, the felony drug, uh, uh, limitations also apply to federal student loans as well, um, and housing opportunities. Uh, in terms of mass incarceration and just the individual effects of incarceration, it has notable effects on families and children. So kids who, um, there are negative effects for kids who have an incarcerated parent. Uh, mass incarceration has decimated many communities in a lot of different ways, and it also affects romantic relationships. Um, also, when we think about this, when we think about prison, we, people, again, make jokes, questionably so, about prison rape, but also we're thinking about that we're sending people to prison and denying them a physical intimacy, so even like a hug, right, or sexual relationships with people, um, which can have negative effects. And then also that there, it costs money generally to keep in contact with people in prison, so um, I am in contact with a number of people in prison um, to email them. Um, there is an email system, um, and it's a dollar per email and an additional dollar if you'd like to send a picture or attach a picture. Um, and then also inmates, when they make phone calls, can either purchase phone cards through the prison or they can call collect, which is notoriously expensive. So that's about it for next week. I want you to go and watch Shawshank Redemption and Black Mirror. Uh, that's an episode, or it's an episodic show. So the episode White Bear is season two, episode two. It's kind of a, uh, well, I don't want to spoil anything. I'll just leave it. Um, so do your responses. Um, the one for last week about Criminal Minds and Dexter, please submit that. I'm giving you some extra time, but it's not due until next Friday or this coming Friday. Um, and you can submit that online. And then this week for Oz and Orange is a New Black will be due the following Tuesday. But if you want to get started early and just keep on top of things because you're bored, um, go ahead and get a jump start on this stuff or fall down the rabbit hole and think about some of the things that I presented for you today. So I didn't remind you to go back and do the vid do the discussions, but take a moment and go back and do them there. And if you have any questions, please feel free to let me know. I hope you're all doing okay and stay safe. Bye.